Hello, everyone, and welcome to JoyCast. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm rejoicing. I'm so glad in it. Not only that, but I am excited because this is my first video episode of JoyCast with DJ High Praise. I'm Brian N. Brooks, and look who my guest is in, in, in very serene surrounding. <laughs> it's Billy Gaines. Lord, thank you for joining me, Billy. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Brian, it's my blessing, brother. Thank you so much for having me. We've been corresponding, sure. yeah, we've been corresponding for over 10 years now. Can you believe it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, way back, brother. Way back, brother. Way back, man. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, people, we are here today to talk about so many things. One of the, the, the main things that we're going to talk about today, and I'm going to get it together here, is Billy's new book, and I have it on my Kindle, Other Side of, of This Trial. And the, the subtitle says, My Story his plan, his hand. Man, I tell you what, I, I just finished the book. I've been trying to, to get oh, wow. it in, you know, <laughs> and, you know, the first thing I'm going to say is that you've had so many Brian's in your life. I mean, every time I turned around, somebody in the book was named Brian. <laughs> yeah. Brian, my son-in-law, Brian, um, Brian Healy, Audrey uh -huh. Brian Healy. Oh, fundamental people in my life, man. No question about it. Yeah. Man, so so I feel honored to 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 be invited in. Another Brian. <laughs> Another Brian. Can you stand it? <laughs> hey man, all of my Brian's are great people, bro. <laughs> man, thank you. Listen, let's talk about this book. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna say this from a from a man's perspective. Very rarely do we share our hearts and do we share um how can I say this? What's going on with us? You know, a lot of times. And for you to do this. I, I, I um understand that this is a legacy for your for your family, for, for your your children, your grandchildren, great grandchildren, and, and generations unborn to get to know who who you are and, and what the Lord has done in your life and, and your relationship with the Lord. So let's talk about the inspiration of this book. Well, it actually was inspired by my daughter giving me a book, and the title of the book was Grandpa Tell Us Your Stories about your life. Wow. So I started trying to fill out this book and I got to like the first or second page and I it asked me these questions. And I thought there is not enough room in this book for me to tell my granted kids. It's just it was just way too limited, you know. Uh huh. And man, I really just started really just started trying to write it out for them. And the next thing you know, man, the Lord just turned on a movie in my head. And, and it reads movie. like a movie when, when I was it reading was it. It was like a roller coaster ride. It, it was like I was yes. up, I was down, I was around. And it was like, oh my God, this is such a good read. And from a how can I say this? From a Christian perspective, I'm I'm I saw the realness of the relationship that you have with the Lord in all in every aspect of your life, which is such Absolutely. a blessing to see. And, and I'll say this, and 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 you know, don't 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 hate me when I say this. <laughs> A lot of times, Christian artists. For for those of you that don't know, Billy Gaines is a, a Christian art, Christian music artist who is amazing. I I say that he is one of the pioneers of progressive gospel music. And, and I'm not going to tell you how long I've been listening. For those of you that that are interested, go back online and, and look to see when when their first recording came out. And, and he was a, a part of, of of Billy and Sarah Gaines. Uh, Sarah is now with the Lord, but the music is here. The ministry is still with us, and we thank God for both of them. But I, a lot of times, Christian artists and, and ministers don't really share the rawness of their lives. In this book, you share the rawness of your life. You share the good, the bad, and the ugly, and what happened, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's so thank you for doing that. Absolutely. Praise God, brother. I tell you. <laughs> because we need to learn how to keep it real as, as Christians, especially African-American Christian men. Can I say that again? That that we don't need yeah. to put on a mask. You know, I mean, from from talking about the tears of your grandfather, the tears of your father, your own tears. OK, I'm going to stop talking. Just to, <laughs> I, I can't help it. That's how excited I am. Praise God, brother. And so excited for, for the readers. So so Thanks. tell us again, you know, about where do you want to go in, in the book? I mean, I have my places I would like to talk about, but I'm going to stop talking because you're my guest. So go ahead. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess I kind of, it's just so, man, there are so many things. I don't even know where to start to tell you the truth. Probably the best thing I could do is uh, for you to really say what you want me to talk about because, I mean, I could talk all day long and maybe, and maybe miss the most 
impactful points. And, well, you, and you read it from your perspective, that makes yeah. a difference. But I yes. lived it. Yes. And, um, so. Well, uh, well, I, 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 well, I'll say this. I would love for you, because one of the things that really, really stood out for me is how hard you worked. Oh, my God. You know, a lot of people think that that because you make an album, that that all of a sudden you're a millionaire, you never have to do anything else. But but you were a hard work. I mean, you've done all types of work. Can you talk about that? Well, yeah, man, I started out. Uh, I mean, well, first of all, when I was 17 years old, when, when God called me mm -hmm. and the first time I ever ministered was at the Open Door Coffee House and. The Lord spoke to me through April Blue. And she said, if anybody has something to offer, do it. And the Lord spoke to me and said, give me what you have, and I'll bless you. I've been playing for all of a week. I got up, went to the piano, and sat down and played. He ain't heavy. He's my brother. Made it halfway through. But finished in acapella because I messed up the chords. Wow. But that was the beginning for me. But in my mind, you know, along with that, the calling of the Lord in my life, letting me know that he wanted me to be in music, that was what his call in my life. Actually, I was planning on being a mechanical engineer initially. Right. Um, that, you know, him letting me know that that was a, for his call on my life. In my mind, okay, I'm 18 when, when I was my, my senior, my junior, my freshman year in college. I'm 18, and next year I'm going to be on the road. Yeah. <laughs> never, it's just, I just knew it was going to happen that way. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It didn't happen that way. Uh-uh. <laughs> that was a long I moved to Hampton, Virginia, and my first job was a place called Helmet Turbine Components Corporation. And what and what job did I get other than grinding what was called buckets and segments wow. inside of a land-based turbine? Turbine there are all of these veins, but they're gigantic metal blades, and I had to stand and grind those things all day long with a hand grinder. I would get off, and my hands were so sore that I had to go soak them in hot water before I could even get them loose enough to try to practice piano. Wow! Not only that. The, those those grinders, when I turned the radio on, it sounded like sirens were behind me, and I turned it off and they'd be gone. So it was the most bizarre thing. But yeah, but wow. I worked all kinds of jobs, man. And um, in my mind, like I said, I just knew it was going to be in full time ministry. Wow. You know, the next year, but I was 17, but I was 30 years old when I finally put out a record. And even wow. right up to right up to the, even while I was making that record, I was working, man. Yeah, you were. I mean, I, I was I was shocked to read that. I was saying, my God, you know, it's like we that that are, how can I say this, that that, that are younger, because <laughs> I am just a little bit younger than you. You know, we have these visions of what it's going to look like. And and sometimes you feel like that you're not doing something right because it's like, well, it's supposed to happen, Lord. You said if, if you called me to it, you're going to provide for it. So, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, but, but you know, as you mature and, and you learn about how God works, he's working something out in you as you're doing that work. Absolutely. No so question about say, it. What would you say to younger, younger musicians that are coming out that feel like? That you know what, or, or ministers for that for that matter, that 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 are out there and 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 they're working a full time job and they feel like, well, maybe I didn't hear from the Lord. Well, I just think that you know one of the things, that, one of the problems with me, first of all, was this whole concept of full time ministry, mm. and that was stoned in my heart very early on because some people said, "Well, you're going to be in full time ministry soon." Okay, I'm I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for that to happen. I think that that can really be misleading to some extent. Mm -hmm. Because the greatest apostle that I know of worked. Yeah. So as a matter of fact, he purposely, even though he could have received everything he needed from the church, he purposely worked with his own hands so that he would make a contrast between him and the charlatans of his day that were in the ministry for music only. Yeah. I mean, in the in the ministry for money only. And, and he, you're talking he, about the apostle Paul. Right, and he talk, when he talks about how working with my hands, he said how I work with my hands to provide my needs, and not only that, for the needs of those who are with me. So he was taking care of other people and working, and raising people from the dead, and doing miracles, and, and writing about and writing New Testament all the time. So if you work in a job, and you and you in ministry, well, you're in good company. Just look at your your look at your example in the Apostle Paul. You know, so but but you know what the I thing. Yes. Amen. See, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm, I don't mean to talk over you, but the thing about it is that I, I get excited about it because I, as I was reading the book, 
and I was I was here hearing about all these different jobs that you've done, and you were a director, assistant director at one time, and you you were a, a manager at another time, and you know, and I was like, oh my god, I said, I'm exhausted just listening <laughs> to this. But the thing about it is that I would assume that your character. And and what the Lord was working out in you for ministry was happening on those jobs because you you were able to write from a perspective of the real person, Absolutely. you know. And it makes me I'm going to be honest with you it makes me appreciate your music even more than I did before. Well, praise you know, God. Because Amen. because I learned something about you as a person, you know. A lot of times, and I'll say this because I'm a music lover. You know, yeah. I, I love classical, I love R&B, I love gospel, I love all types of music. But one of the things that, that I I love even more than music is the story of the people who make it. And that's why I do this podcast, because people yeah. need to, to hear that you are a real person. You know, and a lot of times, um, for those of us that were not raised in the church like me, you know, you you you... I had an idea when I got saved at 19 that, oh, all these people that have been here, they are perfect people and there's nothing wrong in their lives. Oh, I love being here because I can't wait for that perfection to come into my own life. Yeah. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's for a seriously rude awakening. That's all I got. To yes. Say. Well, I would tell you, I think the one, but if you notice the one thread that kind of runs through all of history and runs through all of God's people. It's just one word, waiting. Mm. Having to wait, brother. Moses, 40 years. Yes. Think about that. Think about, uh, and is it amazing? God decides to do something when you're so old. <laughs> Think about that with Abraham. Yes. The wait. Think about Joseph being in Tolstoy Hill as an innocent man. You know, seven, he was about 17 years old also, when he received his dreams, or when he threw, I think when he threw him in the hole, he was 17 at least. And, and Zechariah and Elizabeth. He was 30 when he, he was 30 years old, when he finally came into that prominence where his brother would come before him and the fulfillment of them of them kneeling down before him would come to pass. You look at Jesus' life, you know, 33, 30 years for, in a preparation for a three-year ministry. Mm. He's waiting. Uh, this is what I want, I want people to know. Listen to me when I tell you this. The pattern of God is that we, re we ask and we receive. Yeah. But I very, very seldom is it instant. Jesus said, he, he said that uh, this parable he taught that men might always pray and not lose hope. And then he goes yes. into the story of the widow who was crying out to this king. And he said, this king didn't fear God, didn't fear man or nobody. Mm. Wouldn't even listen to her. He said, but... Because she kept coming back. Yes. One of the words, because of her importunity, but because of her persistence. Yes. Because of her persistence, you know, she's going to wear me out. So I'm going to give her what she wants because I'm tired of her coming and asking me. So uh -huh. if an unjust judge would do something because they got tired of you, then what will a loving father do who loves you? Yes. You know, if he if he he is a better father than we are to our children, and then surely if, if if there's something that we're waiting on, it's all in his purpose. And he does what he does to work out the things that he needs to produce in us. And there's some things we just cannot learn except by having to trust God and to wait. So wow. just get a get a bag of popcorn or whatever and just sit back and and watch the movie because God isn't in a rush to, to manifest things that he's spoken to you. Here's the other thing. Can you hold on? And when, you, when God has spoken to you prophetically or whatever else, mm -hmm. can you hold on when it looks like it's too late and when it's been too long and it must, cannot going to be, it couldn't, there's no way in the world it would take this long if God was in it. Right. Can you stay? I mean, I've, I've even heard some people say, if it's been past a certain amount of time, you probably made a mistake. Well, okay. That might be true for somebody. All I know is, I know that God is faithful, and I know that He's not on anybody's um, time. He's not on anybody's oh. timeline. Exactly, it's like well, He's outside he, of time. He <laughs> surely is, man. And that, not only that, and we assume that just because God has spoken to us to something to us, that we're going to do it. And we're going to do it for I don't know fifty years. May not, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. you may have you may have a three year ministry after thirty years of waiting. You can complain wow. about it. 
you know, do about that, you know? So, it, it, you know I mean, what? It, it's about trust. It's, it's about, about really trust. Who he says, what he says in his word, he means it. And we just, we rest ourselves on that. And I'm, I, I, I look at it this way. Uh, I, I believe God with my very life. Yes, you do. My life, and, my life has no importance when it, in, in the face of God and, and his power doesn't even compare, man. I trust him just what, intrinsically. I, wow. I, I trust him completely. My, my, and, I, and I yield myself to him completely also. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's, that's evident. That's another, that's another yeah. thing I probably want to emphasize in the book is what I've learned about yieldedness a yielded soul can can always uh, can always bounce back and be resilient. Wow! But a, a, but a person who is willful, a person who is rebellious, and a person who accuses God, you got a problem. Wow! And you don't you don't look any further than the children of Israel. It was what two months two months outside of being delivered from slavery. Think about this: mm. two months later, because things didn't go the way they wanted it to. And because they didn't have garlic and onions and melons anymore, and they had to eat this food that God gave them, two months later, they were saying, we would rather be slaves. Yeah, yeah. Think about what all they went in Egypt. Right. They made that conclusion. And what an incredible insult that was to God. Yes. In fact, you know, um, and even Moses, you know, he he just kept crying out to the Lord to preserve them. Because at one point, the Lord told him this. Think about this. He said, look, let me kill these people off. I'll give you some news. <laughs> that's, that's literally what he said. Yeah. And, but Moses came for it. No, no, Lord, I can't. I don't want you to do that because everybody's going to be able to say, you brought these people out in the, in the wilderness. You couldn't keep them alive and you failed. So I, I'm, I'm going to stand in the gap for him. He did. And, yes, he did. Uh, but I mean, I, I, so I just I just say that. I mean, we have to live our lives to yield it. We have to live our lives obedient we have to live our lives with determination to be holy before god and but there's fail, a lot yes i agree but there's a lot fail. but there's a lot to unpack with those words right because when well, you think about it my mother used to say uh well not my mother my, my, my former pastor his wife um uh dr c milton granham and and and, and pastor hyacinth granham that she, she used to say all the time she said don't ask god for patience <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> tribulation work with patience, right? And so you're going to have to go through some things to learn patience. And and you wonder why, as as, as grandparents, I'm a new grandparent, and and as a grandparent, it, it you you tend to be very patient with your grandchild, more patient with your grandchildren than you are with than you were with your own children, you know, because. Yeah. You have learned so much, and you're such a different person now, you know, than, than when you were raising your own kids. And, Man, you said a mouthful, bro. I just, <laughs> I, I, I wish, I wish my kids could have had the same friend, had me, me as a parent that I am as a grandparent. I just yeah. wish I could, but I couldn't be that person. Right, and and, and I couldn't be that person because I because I say to myself, I'm like, ooh, and and, and my my granddaughter is, is is um our granddaughter, my my wife Leslie and I, um. She's less than than uh, uh, seven months old. She's she's about six months old in a few weeks, but she's mm. already doing things. My my son and, and I'll just tell the story real quick. He got really upset. I, we 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 went to his house and and he he was upset. And his wife met us at the door with the baby. And and I said, "Well, where's Jason? His name is Jason." I said, "Where's Jason?" She said, "Jason is upstairs." I said, "Okay." So I I went upstairs and knocked on, I knocked on his bedroom door, and, and he kind of peeked out. <laughs> I'm like, "Well, what happened?" He said, he said, I, I, I was working with, with, with the baby. I had the baby with me and, and she, she knocked her, her bottle on, she threw her bottle on the ground and it, and it, and it broke. Ooh. And, and I think he's just tired. You know, he was just tired. And, and as a grandparent, I'm like, okay, I, that, to me, that's not a big deal, but I didn't say that to him. Right. You know, I, I, I said, okay. I said, well, when you're ready, you know, we're downstairs and, and, and we want to visit with you too. So he eventually came downstairs, but that patience, you know, that, that mm -hmm. tribulation work with patience. And, and because it's like, I listen to your music. One of the things I'll, I'll say this too, as a, a, a um, child musician myself, being, you know, be, being in classical music and, and, and singing, you know, when, when I was in school and everything, I understand the work that goes into a piece of work. 
you know, the, the many, many months of, of, right. of rehearsing and, and, and then getting the right, the right elements and, and, and have a performance and that sort of thing. So I understand all that work, you know, that, that goes into, into music. And, and for you to be a writer and creating something that God gave you to, to give to the people and to record for Generations Unborn, it's like you have the, I'll say it, you have the patience of Job. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes I have felt like, man, I'm telling you, sometimes I felt like Job Jr. I ain't kidding. <laughs> it, it, I really, but, uh, but God has been faithful through all those things. I mean, yeah, I have encountered things that, People would look and say, you know, people look at a guy and they go, sorry, it's him, but glad it ain't me. Yeah. I, I was that guy so many times, man. But uh, I know this, that God would not allow me to be tempted above that which I can bear. And he will not allow me to, to receive any trials that are greater than I can bear because his grace and his power are able to carry me through it all. Yes, it uh, did. Can I say this in, in the book as well? Well, one of the other things, I don't know if anybody else has said this. As I saw some of the perils that you went through, or, or the self-inflicted perils that, that mm -hmm. you went through, I was like, I, I, I'm just going to say, that. I said, if this brother don't sit down and just read a book, I don't know what I'm going to do. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, riding ATVs, you're riding bicycles, and you get into yeah. accidents. I'm like, what in the world? What are you doing? Yep, uh, I just you know, my I think I wrote the chapter Johnsons and Wheels, and I talked about mm -hmm. my. My, my relatives, man, so many of us got hurt on wheels. And uh, i tell you one thing. My mom took a look at that ATV and said, what you buy that thing for? She's mad about it. Uh -huh. She knew what happened to her brothers and motorcycles. Where if, I, if there's ever a time I wish I had listened to her. It was that time. That thing back, took it back and sold it to somebody, man, because yeah, that thing hurt my shoulder, separated my shoulder, and I feel it now, bro. I'm paying for wow. it right now. But thank God he restored your hand and he restored oh. your body. Glory to God. Because I, when I read it, I, I felt the pain when I was reading it. I was like, oh, my gosh. Yes, indeed, man. And can I say this? And, and you can laugh at me. You can talk about me if you want to. As a violin player, I was like, there is absolutely no way that I'm going to put my hands in danger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, man. I just, you know, crazy, crazy stuff dealing with. Just, you know, testosterone, I guess you could say it. I, exactly. You were adventurous. <laughs> well, adventurous. And, and then the moves. Let, let's talk about the moves, the faith to move. Now, I've done some of that um, in, in my life. You know, being you know, I, I work in financial services, so I've had to work in financial services. Sometimes I had to move to other cities and that sort of thing. But it was, it was never a situation for me that I, I did not know that I, I was going to have a job when I got there. <laughs> but the faith that you guys demonstrated as the, a, as you were following the, the yeah. leading of the Lord, can you talk about that a little bit? Not promise. I'm not going to interview. Yeah, you know that, that that was really a highlight for me because you know it, it, it had been a while for us. We had been waiting. Um, it had been already uh, ten years. Let me think. No, no, more about twelve years that we had been waiting and. Um, we had actually gone to Nashville and met with Greg Nelson, who was at, you know, uh, 19th Street Productions and Lorenzo yes. Music. And he basically I'm a huge said, fan of his work. Yeah, you know, Sandy Petty, Lana Harris. Oh, yeah. And also, he also did Richard Smallwood. Richard Smallwood. <laughs> Listen, okay. <laughs> I, 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 during the, the, the ending of this, I'm going to share my music with you. But, but anyway, but go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, so, uh, and... And I really came back to, to Richmond, back from Nashville to Richmond, really kind of frustrated. Wow. Because I felt like I just started playing off of my finger the number of people he was working with, and none of them lived in Nashville, including wow. and Cornell and everybody and Richard Small. And I said, well, why do we need to move to Nashville? Mm -hmm. All these other people you work with them. But he had basically said, you know, you need to develop as a writer. You need the synergy of working with other professionals. Because he was looking at me primarily as a writer, not just as a, as a singer. Mm -hmm. So I prayed about it, man. We prayed about that for seven months. And we came oh. to a place where we just knew God had spoken, that it wasn't him. This was the Lord. So, you know, whatever he had to say didn't really mean anything at this point, because we had come to this conclusion based on what God has shown us. Yes. 
Amen. The day we decided to move, um, very next day, Sarah was you know, Sarah was already pregnant with Nathan. She was she was she was uh, three months pregnant. Mm -hmm. And uh, the very next day, she started hemorrhaging. Wow. And we went down to Medical College of Virginia to the to the, uh, the clinic, and uh, they did an ultrasound, and the ultrasound showed it because we saw it with our, with our own eyes. Yeah. Think about it. We saw it on the screen. There was this, you know, image, and you could see placenta. They pointed it out. Placenta and umbilical cord, little bitty tiny, whatever in there. But the placenta had attached over the opening of the cervix. Oh my goodness. Which is where the baby comes out. Yeah. We showed it to us. It was just no question about it. Wow. And I mean, in my mind, I mean, I didn't know what to think about it. it. Just, I was just stunned by that, to tell you the truth. But they basically, it really had told us that we just needed to abort this baby because wow, it was already compromised because it's already bleeding from the underside. So yeah, you know, compromised, and who knows what will happen for compromised placenta? You know, I, I, everything you can imagine from mal malnourishment to deformities or whatever else could happen because of that. Mm -hmm. But man, we just did in our hearts, but and we agreed together. Uh -huh. We've waited all this time and God tells us to move. And then one day after that, this comes up. We can we cannot believe what we're seeing here. And we know that we've saw his face and he's spoken to us. Wow. And Sarah was put, I put in my notification for my job and she was put on bed rest for a month. Wow. And I used to bring her all of her meals. She stayed in the bed for a whole month. That's, when it, was time that's faith. Go, when it was time for us to go, we got up and we loaded up the junk like the like the clampus and moved to Beverly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, really, man. We loaded up the you know loaded up a van that we had with our, just a our few things, and we moved to Nashville. And I'm telling you, brother, the very day that we arrived in Nashville, I'm telling you that bleeding stopped immediately. Wow. I'm talking about no, I'm not talking about. You know, a few days and then it got better and better and better. I'm talking about it was completely gone the very first day we Wow. And that was November the 16th of 1984. Wow. And not only that, you know, later on, when she made a doctor's appointment, we went to the Nashville General Hospital in Nashville mm -hmm. and we told them the story of what they had told us. And they did an ultrasound and they said, We don't know what you're talking about. There's nothing wrong. And they showed us there's nothing wrong with the placement of this placenta. Wow. So God, God can move placentas. Yes, he can. <laughs> move the attachment place of a placenta. So people tell me they don't live in miracles. Okay, well, I tell you what, it's like telling me it's like me being a bird and I'm flying. Uh -huh. trying to, hey, you can't fly. No, I, I'm fine. You can't tell me that God didn't do that. Amen. So I, that fact, you know, um, I realized that was God's hand. And then the most amazing thing happened the very next day, which was November 17th. Mm -hmm. The lady, Nancy Nicola, who had actually connected us with Gentry Recur in the first place, mm -hmm. the first record thing. I'm not going to all that. Yeah. She was a woman now that had, was glad to hear that we were there. She said, can you come down to Cornelius tomorrow, Saturday the 17th? They were having something at Cornelius. I didn't know what it was. She just invited us to come down. As soon as I walked in the door, she asked, did you bring a track? Because uh -huh. WNAD was broadcasting this live. And, and they want you to go on. They want me to go on. And what? We don't even know who we are. But whatever she had said, it convinced them to do it. So there we are. The very first day we move into town, we are on WNAZ radio station, and we are singing on the radio. Wow. We chose to sing. DB and Speechings Lord Lift Us Up. That was the track we used. <laughs> really? Wow. Yes, indeed. That's amazing. <laughs> That was we had that track and we sang that song on the radio there, and um, man, by the time we finished singing and getting out to the foyer of this building, this lady comes breaking in the front door. Her name is Susanna Ryan Wilson. She had been riding down the road and she heard us singing on the radio and she raced to Cornelius to come and say, "I got who are these voices? They're the exact voices I've been looking for, so forth and so on." Wow. And you know, one week later, the following Friday, as a matter of fact, we were in the recording studio, recording a demo for her song, a song written by her and Thornton Klein, <laughs> song titled Love is a Reason. Love is a Reason. That's one of my songs. That's my jam. And that song, that demo that we did, landed a cut on that, that song yeah. by Ingerbert and Gloria what? Gaynor. Wow. We first, recorded that song. we first recorded it. And, well, long story short, ultimately, it would 
that song later on when that when the dust settled when we signed with Benson Records, uh, Dan Clary, I was in his office talking about the three song demo that we were working on and how you know, did he like it and so forth. And so he said, he said, I didn't sign you on the strength of that. He said, I signed you. Hello? No, I'm here. Oh, okay. He said, I didn't sign you on the strength of that. He said, I signed you guys on the strength of that uh, Love is a Reason demo that Greg Nelson gave me. L so I thought to myself, oh my goodness, man, if we, if we had never made these three songs that we were already working on, it, it was already done. And it, wow. already, it happened with a connection that we made the very same day that we arrived in town. So, man, it was, it's was it been a, a truly amazing, a truly amazing ride of what God has done, man. Amen. And look at this body of work. I just wanted the, the, the viewers to see that. Look at this. Can you see this? Yeah, that was the first one there. <laughs> I tell you what. And he'll find a way was next. Yeah. Then friend indeed. Uh-huh. And then uh loves a key. No, no, loves a key is this next. Yep. No, no, no. no. Um, no one loves me like you was next. Then he loves was key. Okay. Then uh come on back was the one that Michael Martin produced. Now all awesome albums. And, and as you can see, I'm a collector, right? I see. <laughs> so wow. I have, I have all of this. 10,000 Angels, that, that was the one that uh, that I sang. And Bernie Herms played piano. Uh, Bernie Herms is now the grand husband. He played piano on that whole record, man. He oh, did. wow. What a job, man. What a beautiful album. It's a beautiful hymns album. I mean, when you think about this album, I mean, to look at, at these songs, and every time we play it, it just fills our home with such peace and such it, it, such joy, you know? No, and I, I, the number the number of people that have told me they use their this album in their in their nursery for their baby. Oh yeah, this baby, this album has put more babies to sleep. <laughs> but but it's a good thing. It's not. It, it's about the the you know soothing their their spirits even while they are asleep. Now, what you you you're so modest. You know, some people will lead with this, but you are a two time Dove Award winner. Yeah, you know, as a matter of fact, I won. We won one dove for, I won one dove for my for being on the song um, "Father's Arms" on uh, the. Uh huh. I'm looking for it. The, the uh, "Sing Me to Sleep" Daddy record. Uh let me see. Sing me to sleep. On, you, this one right that, here, that, right there, right there. As a matter of fact, if you look, I don't know if you can read the list of people on there. Oh yeah, um, Guy Penn and Rob, Michael W. Smith. Michael James, Michael O'Brien, Wayne Watson, Angelo Petrucci, uh, Randy Stonehill, Phil Kiki, all of us did songs. Mm -hmm. all yeah. It's a beautiful album. And the other album I have as well, what is the name of it again? Let me see if I remember. The other Which, one that you won, it was a um, Generation. Oh, for generation. Um, um, the uh, Generation to Generation. That was generation. another. And here's uh, another album that you're on. Yeah, you know this one here. Alibi. Yes, and this I, I was so shocked to look and find this thing on online in, in general, mm -hmm. and to find it in my uh, <laughs> to find it in in my um, Spotify and to see the number of streams that it had. I was just absolutely shocked. I'm like, kidding. it's like, man, oh man, I had no idea, you know. It's a beautiful, beautiful album. Where is my Generations to Generation? This song I really, really love. This one right here, Serving Jesus. It, yeah. it, 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 it's like a prayer. It is, man. It's my heart, bro. That really, that really is my heart. You know, because that more than anything, I want my kids to, I want my kids to serve Jesus. But here's another one that had uh, a number of Fred Hammond was on it. Lonnie Harris was on the same mm -hmm. record. Matthew Ward was a part of second chapter of Acts. Glad. Mm -hmm. It's like Fred with another. Like Fred had another one there also. Okay, he has one with his mother. It's this yeah. one. This one and this one here. This one yeah. with his mother and his, I guess his oldest child, Devin. Yep. Yep. But but so it's for him, Dallas Home, mm -hmm. Kevin Thompson, Dana Key for of the Garmon Key. It was loaded. But anyway, we run a we this one won a uh a, a, a double award also for the uh, best inspirational album of the year. Yeah. So I I had to do that because I usually don't do the um the award the awards, but this album uh not that one where is it? It is called 
It's the one we I think we did um Oh yes, right. Christmas thing is on here. We did Christmas thing on this one. Yes. Yeah. And then there's another album that you're on, which is sold out. Man, you know what? Um, I Let's wish see. I could get a hold of that album. Sold out. What did we do on that? Let's see. You did um, um you did a, a you you did an interview and a, a friend indeed. Okay, well, this is different. There's another one that we did that Benson released. It was a Sunday morning thing. We did a hymn. Oh, and it was a number. It was. Uh, what was it? Um, Wait a minute. I think it was. G I think we did Jesus Keeping Near the Cross on that record. I got to. I, I got to do this. Let me see if I, I don't know it. if they. I don't know if they could even find that record, man. To tell you the truth. I'm going to try. Watch this. I love doing this with, with, with the artists themselves. Oh man. So you, you guys need to put some more of your music out here. <laughs> this is all that's available. So yeah, that's is. you know, I can't really control that because this is what the, what you the know, with, company? all of all of our masters, this is what they chose to put up, which was the the one that they kind of dropped on top of uh they dropped this right on us before we released the one with Warner Brothers. I well, after to. this podcast, it's going to change. We're going to put it out there and we're going to say, in the name of Jesus, that they will release every Billy and Sarah Gaines record ever recorded in its original form in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Because this, this is good, but uh, we need we need more. And, and it yes, needs to be there for, for all generations. So I just wanted to share that with you. I was so proud of my collection, as you could tell. And and I'm so excited to be able to share it with you that I am a true, I am a true supporter. I won't say fan because people talk about me if I say fan, because Christians, we're not supposed to be fans. We're supposed to be supporters. And one of the other artists that you recorded with was Cece Winans on her original on, on, on her uh, original her first release, Alone in the Yeah, Street. that's right. I surrender I all. On, when I, I was listening on. to it, I heard your voice come through. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was me. And then I also sang on her um Let Them Fall in Love Again. Yes, you do. Think background on that too. Yeah. Yes. That's a great album. Her son Alvin produced that, and so yeah, that was a great day. Yeah, that's a great album. I sang on the I sang on DC Talk, uh, the DC Talk records, socially acceptable, and uh, Word to the Father and Love is a Verb. I sang on those three songs. Yeah. And how humble are are you to 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 do things like that? Because I'm going to say, people that I that have never heard you before, I let them hear you, and they're like. How come I've never heard this guy before? Because you're not paying attention. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it it, it it really does come down to marketing and the in the effort that they put into. I mean, it comes down to the effort they want to put into who they want to promote, man. That's, that's just the truth. I mean, well, kind of one of the kind of the, one of the sad stories we kind of got at uh, Benson sometimes is we just don't know how to market you. <laughs> You know, and, and it was the, at the time, because like I said, you guys are pioneers. I'm going to do this really quickly because I do want people to see your presence online. And as you, ladies and gentlemen, are watching and listening to this podcast, you need to support Billy Gaines. Billy Gaines is amazing. And, I, and, I, and I'm just really, really privileged to be able to, to talk to you and to to even have you on, on this podcast. But as you look at this, this is his website, people. And you can find his his some of his performances. There's so there are videos out here. There the, the music, even though you may not be able to find it there, you can find it here. You can download it. You can you can purchase. Can they still purchase CDs? Some of us some of us are old school, and we want the hard. I know uh, all of these are downloads. Uh -huh. um, but you can buy a physical CD of of a Lisa of my hymns record on Amazon. Okay. That's awesome. They actually, they actually burn them, you know. So. <laughs> but but check it out, people. I mean, all this beautiful music is available, even though you may not be able to find it on, on Apple Music. Shame on Apple Music. Okay, I'll behave. But well, you know, know. it's much better. And it, it's quite frankly, it's much better for us that people actually buy a record than it is to have it streamed. So anybody who would go and purchase it, it would be much appreciated. No question about it. 
If you want to learn more about Billy Gaines, his bio is out here telling you all the things that, that he has done and things that he is doing. You can check it out. The discography, I'm telling you, this is, you know, they used to call James Brown the hardest working man in, in music. Billy Gaines is the hardest working man in gospel music. <laughs> I, and, and I can say that because if you look at these credits, amazing. Nicole C. Mullen, Amy Grant, DC Talk, Carmen. I'm I, you just worked with everybody. And book yeah. agents, you, if you want him to come and sing your soul happy, you can sign up here and, and have him come out and 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 sing because you've been a worship leader as well in in, in certain ministries. That's yes. in the book too, people. And and I'm not blowing smoke. This is one of the hardest working people I have ever met in my life. Well, thank you, brother. Thank and you. you get for those of you that think you can sing <laughs> and want to minister these songs, you can actually purchase the accompaniment MP3 tracks as yeah. well. You don't That's have to, true. yeah. So let the uh, you know I I could go on and on with this. I know you're you're, you're a busy man, but. I, I just had to do this, and, and I hope you you appreciate it because, like, oh, I, no, said, I do appreciate, it, brother. I'm grateful. Trust me. I am such a Billy Gaines fan. And can I say this? You know, as we um, wrap up, because I know we have a few more minutes. When I first saw you guys, I first saw you at Redeeming Love Christian Center in Nanduet, New York, on a very, very cold and icy New Year's Eve. What I'm, what did you say? I'm sorry. <laughs> the first time I ever saw you was at Redeeming Love Christian Center in Nanduet, New York. Oh, that's on right. On a very, yeah. very cold and icy New that Year's Eve. Right. Yeah. That was an amazing concert. Wow. And we're not going to tell people how long how long ago that was. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I mean, hey, think about it. When you let them know that our first record came out in '86, that that gives them a point of reference right there. You know, so. and that's all you're going to get, people. If you want to know the rest, buy the CDs and 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 download the music. That's all I'm going to say. But no, the the thing about it about that concert that I remember, and I was new to to the Lord, right? And and I was just learning about all this great music, all these great artists. And one of the things that I did see about you and and Sarah is your sincerity, your sincerity and your confidence in your relationship with the Lord. That it, that had an impact on my life. You know, exactly. because I did like I said, I didn't grow up in a, in a Christian family. I did not grow up, you know, in in church. You know, my my church was the radio. The, the, the gospel music that played on Sunday morning. That's how I learned things about wow. God. And the, the, the seeds of, of righteousness were planted in my heart by listening to different artists and listening to, to different music, not mm -hmm. realizing I was learning the, the, the foundations of, of the Christian faith. And as I, and then when I gave my life to the Lord and getting into his word and, and allowing the Holy spirit and lead to lead and, and guide me into his truth, it, it, it just, it just, impacted me so much and and, and seeing a, a husband and a wife because I was I was newly married you know my wife and I and 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 we were just so excited to be there with you and wow. and that whole evening was just so blessed and to be here these many years later talking to you that you even said yes that you want to talk to this guy this other Brian that I don't know <laughs> and he and he won't leave me alone so <laughs> I oh, praise God for you you're a blessing and a pleasure. Trust me when I tell you that. No question about that. Yeah. No, thank you. Well, as we as we wrap this up, we have about a uh, uh, 10, 10 more minutes. Okay. But we can go on as long as you want to. But I, I'm trying to be, you know, I don't want to be too sad. I mean, I'm I'm here I as long as you need. Here for hours. <laughs> I'm here as long as you need. If you want to run over, it ain't gonna hurt me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I am. What what do you want to say to to the reader? Because you know, a, as I look at the book, I mean, just being in, in tears. Because one of the things that we didn't talk about is is the loss, the the many many losses that that you had experienced in your life, and for you to still have faith. Because th there are some people that when they experience loss, they start to blame God. They start to blame God. You took my mother away. You took my child away. You you know, and they start blaming him. You know, for for those things, I, I thought God was good. Why is He doing this? What would you say to somebody like that? 
I don't know. I I I I could never really relate to the concept of being angry with God. I just mm. that is so foreign to me. Yeah. Just, I just that could never even enter my mind. I'm gonna be honest with you. Just couldn't. Uh, to know, I, I, but I can identify with this. Is something that's happened to me. Yeah. And God could have stopped it, but He didn't. <laughs> I don't know why He didn't, and I wish that He had, but He didn't. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't. But there's no fault in God. That was wow. a, that, that was why Job was so blessed. It was because the Bible says this. Even though he even though he said, "I wish I was dead." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wish I hadn't been born. I mean, he said that. Right. But he never ever accused God falsely. He never accused God of being wrong in his judgments or anything else. He, even when his wife said, "Look, just curse God." Curse God and die. die. Yeah. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't go to that. So I think that what is learned from that man is to trust God with all of your heart. This is my this is my theme for life. Uh, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your understanding or your intelligence or what you think you know. But acknowledge him and ask him, you know, bring everything to him, lay everything down in his feet, seek his counsel about everything, and he will direct your steps. He's promised you that. Yes, he those has. are immutable promises, man. They he can't change those. He will do that. Now, what that looks like, the way that manifests, may be something that may not even be look like an answer to you. But you have to trust God through those things because you you will you will be not alone. You're not alone. You having to trust God through adversity. Amen. Think about Jacob. Jacob prayed. Well, how many years? I think he worked for like it was an amazing amount of time. He worked for his uncle. Yeah. To marry Rachel. Yeah. And he finally gets her. Yes, he's finally married her. She has one kid, and on the second child, but wait, she he had to child. take the uh, he had to take the other sister first, right? And then, yeah, right. You know, <laughs> he had to work. But think when, he, when he finally has a surprise now, yeah, she does. And, and of all things, she dies in childbirth. Yeah, and he has to bury her. You know, so I look at that when I look at the things I went through, having to bury, you know, two wives actually. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I realize I'm not any different from those who've suffered. Wow. I'm not, man. Uh, people have suffered all kinds of things, and people of God have suffered. I mean, I, I think about uh, who is it, Mephibosheth, that was dropped and he was crippled. Yes. And David took care of him for the rest of his life, but this is a, a child got crippled because somebody was running with him, dropping. If it's those kind of things, we look at that. We said, well, couldn't God? Yes, God could. Can you send an angel? Well, doesn't the angel of the Lord encamp around about us and check? Yes, He does. Yes. But there is there is no guarantee that God has protect He's protecting us from every single thing that could happen to us in our lives. Right. And we can't do some dumb stuff to get ourselves hurt. Yes. You know, on, on a bicycle, on the ATV. <laughs> <laughs> man. Dumb stuff, man. You know. Uh, but I can't blame God for that. I wow. did that. You know. That's uh, just a mercy that I'm alive. So I just think that. We have to have the right attitude towards God, and we have to live. This, this is the one thing I would say to everybody. You have to live yielded. Every day of your life, you have to get up and, and say, Lord, I'm yours. Amen. I trust you with everything I have. You are perfect in all of your ways and all of your judgments. In everything that you do, you are perfect, Lord. And I just come to you, and I just and I submit myself to you that I'm yours, and I'm surrendered to you. Whatever it is you want in my life that you want to remove, Lord, grant me grace and power to, first of all, show me what it is you want me to do and grant me grace and power to get rid of any sin, anything, any evil in my life that you don't want. And I know that God will do that. And we have to live yielded. We have to, we have to live uh, ready and, and, you know, and we have to live being easily corrected. Yes. <laughs> to repent. Wow. Have to Say that alive. again. And when we live our lives that way, man, we, there's nothing but blessing that's going to come to us, you know. Amen. Because we prove, when we do those things, we prove the word of God by our response to his requirements to us. Mm -hmm. Not only that, we are in an arena where others can observe us, and even in our adversity. Yes. How can look at this, this big old arena, and, every, and all of heaven, all of hell is watching us, and we are in that arena. And uh, sometimes we're like gladiators. Uh, but we are on display before this whole world, Amen. And before all of all of creation. So, 
Man, that that's profound. I, I wanted to say this, and I am going to go over this a little bit. You know, one of the one of the other lessons that I learned from your book is about the heritage of faith, the legacy. Babby Mason wrote a song called "Heritage of Faith." Um, I think uh, one of the um, the lyrics, um, "Heritage of Faith." legacy of love passed down from our fathers down to our sons. You know, we raised the banner high mm -hmm. living in the name of Christ. So others will know the way from this heritage of faith. It's such a beautiful song. And, and as I was reading the book and, and as you were talking about your family members, um, I, I saw a heritage of faith that was being passed down from generation to generation. And it's such a beautiful, yeah. beautiful thing. And then, you know, I, I, I started to also think about during the time that, that your ancestors lived, your, your, your grandparents, your, 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 your parents, you know, during the, the, the time in Virginia, when things were not what they are today, you know, and I'm oh. talking about being people of color in, in that space. Absolutely and, not. And I was just thinking about the love of your community, the love of, of, of how you guys just, just loved each other and surrounded each other. It's such a beautiful thing to, to read about in, in, in this book. Um, as we close um, this recording that we're doing, if you could speak to Generations Unborn, I'm talking about your grandchildren's grandchildren, what would you say to them? You know, it really would be the same thing. Uh, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your steps. It would be the same thing. That is my, that's my life scripture, man. It really is. Man. The other one would be this. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added to you. Those two, man. I think. I mean, everything kind of hinges on that. But above all those would be this. <clears throat> you should love the Lord God with all of your heart, all your mind, and all your strength. And you must love your neighbor as yourself. And on those two commandments, hang all the law and all the prophets and everything we could ever know. Because if we filter our actions, words, and thoughts through those two commandments, it will change the way that we express ourselves for the rest of our lives. Amen. Wow. Okay. Well, well, thank you for joining me on this episode of Joycast, my first video episode. I'm so excited. I don't know how to behave myself. I'm glad to be the first. <laughs> thank you. Yes, you are the first. And, and I hope you excuse my 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 exuberance because I've just been <laughs> just bouncing yeah, off the walls. Okay. <laughs> no, but but uh, before we go, I just wanted to let you know, um, viewers and listeners, that I am Brian N. Brooks, a.k.a. DJ High Praise, and I thank God for you taking the time for, for stopping by. I pray that everything that we talked about will enhance your life and encourage you to, to follow Jesus. He loves you. He's soon to come. Tell everybody about it. This is an exciting time <laughs> for us to, to get ready for, for this coming, and we're talking about eternity. So get ready, get ready. Get ready. So before we go, I'm just going to share a few things with you. And I'm going to share my screen again because you know me. I love I love technology, right? It's what I do. So don't forget, my guest today was Billy Gaines. Stop by his website. You'll find everything you need to know about Billy Gaines there. You need to check out his book here, which is the other side of this trial. It is a beautiful read. It, it reads like a movie, people. You, you will not be able to put it down and make sure you bring your tissues with you. But <laughs> I am here. This is my website. This is djhighpraise.com and you will be able to find my, my two radio stations. I have my gospel radio station, DJ High Praise Radio. I have Musical Tapestry Radio, which plays classical, classic R&B, pop rock, as well as gospel. Um, in addition, I have my podcast, which you're watching right now, which is Joycast with DJ High Praise. And as you go through, you'll see videos. You'll see um, my episodes of Babby's House, which you'll love. In addition to music, we also play uh, um, inspirational devotion. You froze. <laughs> we, we do. Oh, am I frozen? You're frozen. Are you there? Oh, I can see you're moving. I'm here. 
Okay. You, you froze for a little while. I guess both of us froze, maybe. <laughs> I know. It's, it's like Brian is doing too much, but the, the, but everything is there. And so DJ High Praise Radio is here. You need to check it out. And like I said, we have devotionals that you'll hear from the people like Babby Mason. You'll hear from the Worship Initiative uh, devotionals, my beautiful wife, Leslie Edie Brooks, Dr. Peggy Banks, and, and Phil and Brenda Nicholas. And for... Uh, Musical Tapestry Radio, I as I stated, I love classical music. You'll hear uh, Wynton Marcellus, and also you'll hear uh, some classic R&B from, the, from the Supremes. Yes, in my estimation, music never dies. It only no dies when you stop listening to it. So I'm going to encourage you to listen to it. Until next time, thank you, Billy Gaines, for your patience. We love you. Thank you, Robert. Love you, too.